Hello everyone and welcome to St. Thomas Aquinas College News Live. I'm Ali Arduini. And I'm Greg Cordone. And we're here to give you the latest in today's news. Tonight's top story concerns worldwide action for the treatment of the worsening Ebola outbreak, which has been referred to by many World Health Organizations as the most threatening viral surge in modern times. As the death toll of the shockingly infectious disease grows uncontrollably in West Africa, governments and hospitals around the world are revamping their biocontainment units and stockpiles of protective gear to prepare for the possibility of the virus breaching their borders. On Wednesday afternoon, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention issued, a new, global, issued new global rules requiring all travels, travelers from Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone to check in with their local health departments twice a day for the first 21 days after returning. Participants must report their temperatures twice a day, as well as any other irregular symptoms, and will be subject to possible detaining upon failure to comply. As the United States welcomes 150 travelers from the affected country each day, the new initiative will effectively sort these, those experiencing regular flu symptoms from others who could have possibly contracted the disease. Officials hope that it will not only help stop the spread of the disease, but that it will also calm an increasingly paranoid American public that has little to worry about, in comparison to the affected West African countries. Well, that's all for today's international news. Now let's head over to Lauren for our entertainment segment of the day. Thanks, Allie. We now turn to some breaking news. We've just received word that legendary fashion icon Oscar de la Renta passed away at the age of 82. The designer was remembered for dressing countless celebrities in the latest trends, styling everyone from Sarah Jessica Parker to Michelle Obama. After launching his own label back in 1965, his designs caught the attention of Jackie Kennedy, which soon led to his worldwide success, making Oscar de la Renta a household name. Since then, the iconic designer launched several lines, including a bridal line most recently worn by the newly married Amal Clooney. Despite being diagnosed with cancer in 2006, he didn't let it stop him from continuing to do what he loved most. In an interview with the International Business Times, De Laurenta stated, the only realities in life are that you are born and that you die. The one thing about having this kind of warning is how you appreciate every single day of life. The fashion industry may have lost one of its most talented designers, but his legacy will continue to live on and is sure to be enjoyed by fashionistas for many generations to come. I'm Lauren Higgins with What's Going On in Entertainment. Now back to you guys. Thank you, Lauren. Terrific send off to a much missed fashion man. Now, it's a tragic day for the family of a three-year-old Brooklyn girl who died from injuries sustained from a vicious beating Saturday at a city homeless shelter while the toddler's mother was at work. The girl's stepfather, Kelsey Smith, was taken into custody for connection to the beating. Now, according to local sources, Smith, age 20, had become angered with the victim, his stepdaughter, young Jada Torres, after she accidentally soiled herself. Smith was apprehended at his aunt's home where he had fled and cut his wrists. The girl's older brother, age five, was also beaten. He's hospitalized in Wyckoff Heights Medical Center and thankfully is in stable condition. The young stepfather is charged with felonious assault, charges which may be upscaled. We now head on over to Tim with the latest news on technology. Thanks, Greg. That's, that's right, the moment is here, Apple fans. Apple Pay has finally arrived. Apple Pay, which will allow users to pay for purchases directly in store from their iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus. In order to use Apple Pay, users scan their credit cards into their phone using the Passport app. When users are at the checkout of a participating retailer, all they have to do is stand close enough to the receiver and use Touch ID and the payment will go through without even unlocking the Apple phone. According to AppleInsider.com, so far payments have gone through successfully at retailers such as Panera Bread, Walgreens, and Toys R Us. Right now, the list of participating retailers that accept Apple Pay is somewhat limited but it is expected to expand significantly over the next year. This is just the latest advancement in technology, and pretty soon credit cards as we know them may become obsolete. Personally, I don't know if I'm ready to give up my credit card just yet, but I will certainly have to give it a try. For Stack News, I'm Tamara Simchuk. Now let's go back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Tim. And in other news, a new law has been recently passed in New York State, stating that students in all New York high schools must receive CPR and automatic defibrillator training. Governor Cuomo recently signed the bill into law after the American Heart Association and other groups stated the need for this type of education in our schools. Other parents also lobbied for the passage of the bill, including Audrey Linguanti of Rockland County. 
Ms. Linguanti said she wanted the law to be made in honor of her son, a high school student who tragically died in 2006 of an enlarged heart. The State Education Department has 180 days to make re recommendations to the Board of Regents about how to introduce the training to the high schools, and schools will introduce the new program by next year. Now let's go over to Brendan and Kevin with sports. Thanks, Allie. The Giants didn't seem to do enough to get a much-needed win on Sunday as they lost to the Cowboys 31-21. Life after Victor Cruz continued with another loss, a second straight setback against a second straight NFC East opponent. And now the Giants head into their bye week with a 3-4 and four record. Eli Manning threw three touchdown passes without an interception for the first time since 2012, but it wasn't enough as Tony Romo threw three of his own scores and went incompletion free in the second half. First round pick Odell Beckham Jr. had a pair of touchdown catches, but couldn't match Dallas's Des Bryant, who had two touchdowns of his own and collected seven of his nine catches in the second half against Prince of Mukamara. It's looking like a two-team race in the NFC East between the 6-1 Cowboys and the 5-1 Eagles. Hopefully the Giants are able to turn it around and get back into contention. That's all we have for sports today. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brendan and Kevin. Not a good game for the Giant fans, I'm sure. Now let's head on over to Angela and see what we have to look forward to with our weekly weather. Thanks, Greg. Well, fall is officially here, and there are plenty of leaves on the ground to prove it. The past couple days, we've seen some rain, so be careful driving because those leaves are really slippery. Unfortunately, the rain will continue for the rest of the day into Friday. Temperatures staying in the upper 50s into the low 40s. Luckily, Saturday we can put those umbrellas away, and for the rest of the weekend, there may be some sh straight sun up until Monday. With the sun sticking around, temperatures ride to the mid-60s, but don't get too excited because you'll still need those jackets at night when temperatures drop to the low 40s. I'm Angela Marchese with your Stack Weather, now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Angela. Looks like we're getting the perfect weather for Halloween this year. As always, for St. Thomas Aquinas College News Live, I'm Allie Arduini. And I'm Greg Cordone. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.